All right, in this video, we're going to do a specific heat capacity problem. Um, and there's a couple things to, to take note of. I wonder if you guys can hear my goats. Anyway, they're right outside the window. Problem. Mm, interesting. Problem. Uh, there's a couple things to take note of. One thing in this problem is that there's a lot of uh, algebra and it can be a little bit tedious. Uh, the algebra isn't really the point. I want you to understand how to do it. Yes, you do need to be able to solve the algebra, but that's not um, what we're really after in this video. I'm going to show you how to do the problem and I'm going to wa walk you all the way through it. Okay, so let's get started. A 79.2 gram piece of copper. I think my goat started calling because I could hear my voice. Anyway, um, and the specific heat capacity for copper is 385 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay, and that goes for any piece of pure copper. At 56.2 degrees Celsius is placed in a beaker with 195.0 grams of water. At 15 degrees Celsius. And the question is what is the final temp? What is the final temp of the metal? And I could just as easily ask for the final temp of the water. So let's kind of diagram what's going on here really, really quickly. So first thing, we have this piece of copper. And it's copper. It has a mass of 79.2 grams. And it's at 56.2 degrees Celsius. And then we have a beaker of water. Somehow my beaker is smaller than my piece of copper. That's okay. 195.0 grams and it is at 15.0 degrees Celsius. Now we combine the two. We still have the water and we have the piece of copper that is now shrunk to fit. That is the copper. Um, and what's going to happen is heat will flow. Heat will flow out of the copper and into the water. Okay. So that will happen until they are at the same temperature. Okay. So that is key to this problem is that is T final, T final of the copper is going to be equal to T final of the water. How do we know that? Because again, heat will flow until they are at the same temperature then there is no hot, no cold, no heat can no longer flow. All right. So a couple of things to remember is that um, I didn't state the first law of thermodynamics this way, but it also says that an isolated system or the energy of an isolated system is constant. So what we can say is the heat of the system plus the heat of the surroundings is equal to zero. In other words, they don't change. Sometimes you will see this written, and actually most of the time, as this. Um, and that's perfectly correct. Whoops, negative sign there. That's perfectly correct, but I find students get confused by that negative sign. Honest to God, you give them Q system, for some reason they can't find Q surroundings, okay? You just slap the negative sign in front and, and everything's fine. So that's why I go with this equation. It says exactly the same thing. For whatever reason, it's just easier for everyone to deal with. OK, 
Okay, now let's define our system and our surroundings. So Q of the system, or, or I'm sorry, the system is our metal, and we could define it any way we want. I'm going to call it copper, Cu. So Q of Cu plus Q of the H2O is equal to zero, because heat is going from the copper into the water. We're assuming that no heat is transferred anywhere else into the beaker. Probably not a great assumption, but that's the way these problems kind of work. Okay. So let's go through this um, one step at a time. And we're just going to start plugging in numbers, basically. Well, first, let's let's spell it out. So Q of the copper is equal to mass of the copper plus C of the copper plus delta T of the copper. And then Q of H2O is equal to mass of H2O times C of H2O times delta T of H2O, okay? So you got to keep all of those things straight. So we can plug in numbers for each one of these things. Mass of the copper was 79.2 grams. C of the copper is 0 0.385 joules per gram degree Celsius and then Delta T is T final minus uh, what was the initial 56.2 okay and then plug stuff in over here sorry these should be separate okay. mass of the water was 195 grams C of the water this never changes 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius and you'll note that is the conversion between uh, that's the same value as the conversion between calories and joules and, and T final minus 15.0 degrees Celsius all right and remember these two values are the same so now what we're going to do is simplify and plug some stuff in, okay? So we're going to have one big hairy equation that's all going to be equal to zero. And I got kind of jumbled around in my notes here. That's okay. I have 30.492, just multiplying those two numbers together, joules per degree Celsius times um, T final minus 56.2 degrees Celsius plus, and you'll want to go back and make sure that you have all this correct in your, uh, what you, I'm sorry, what I'm trying to say is you want to go back and make sure that you can work this problem out. Joules per degree Celsius times T final minus 15.0 degrees Celsius. And of course, we're setting that all equal to zero, okay? And that 18, 18 15.88, that's just those two numbers multiplied by each other, okay? So I simplified and plugged everything into the equation kind of just to save a step. Uh, now let's go. Uh, simplify again. Yeah, so just get blue. Okay, from this point out, it's really just algebra solving for T final. This should be T final here. Okay. So we have. Boy, this gets to be a jumbled mess. We have 30.492 joules per degree Celsius times T final minus. 1713.65 joules plus 18 18 15 or I'm sorry 815.88 joules per degree Celsius times T final minus 12238.2 joules Okay, and then simplifying again, just combining 
Uh, what we're going to do is going to obviously combine the t final terms together, and then we're going to combine these terms together. Okay. And obviously, you guys can watch this a couple of different times, so you can figure this all out um, if I'm losing you right now, which is totally understandable. I'm not going slow. Three, seven, two joules per degree Celsius times T final minus 13,951.85 joules. Again, still all equal to zero. Move this value over to the other side. So we have 846.372. And I'm keeping more sig figs than I need. Um, just to ensure I don't have a rounding arrow error. Probably not entirely necessary, but not a bad idea. Okay, now we just divide. And T final is equal to... Uh, and by the way, your joules, are, when you divide, your joules are going to cancel out. The 1 over Celsius gets flipped over, so we get degrees Celsius, which is what we're looking for. 16.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's our final answer. It's always a good idea to ask yourself, well, does that make sense? Does that number, is that number reasonable? Well, first of all, we got the right unit. Okay, and then 16.5 degrees Celsius. Let's look back at our original problem. There it is. We had um, a relatively small amount of copper versus a relatively large amount of water. Water has a very high specific heat capacity. Copper has, it's like a tenth of the heat capacity. So the copper, that small piece of copper, does not hold much heat. And water can absorb a lot of heat before it changes temperature. So the 16.5, uh, sorry, allergies. The 16.5 is pretty close to that 15.0 because the copper is going to lose all of its heat and the water is just not going to warm up very much. Okay, So the 16.5 is close to that 15.0, so that's how we can check ourselves and know that we have a good answer. Okay, that was fun. Um, we'll move on to work in the next video.